As you can see, they didn't waste time building brick houses. Most homes were just large tents. That way they could easily take them down and put them up. This doesn't mean they were poor. Many of the nomads were wealthy traders. This was just about survival. The next highway is society, where we will look more closely at Islam. Early on in Arabian history, most tribes were polytheistic, Islam did not come along until later. Polytheistic means Each they believed in many gods. Separate gods and totems, to water and wind, fire and night. They were kept in the caravan town of Mecca, in a shrine of wood, stone and cloth. It was called the Kaaba, the Arabic word for cube. Pre-Islamic Arabs worshipped a number of spirits, and they were generally nature-oriented spirits, sometimes associated with natural, natural features like trees or rocks or springs. And uh, the Kaaba in Mecca was one of a number of these sanctuaries centered around a particular cluster of deities. It was said the Hebrew patriarch Abraham himself built the Kaaba centuries before and that a sacred black stone it held within had fallen from the sky. In these turbulent times, the Kaaba provided a rare place of peace. Only here would the Bedouin submit to a temporary truce before returning to their conflicts of the open sands. There was this one place in the middle, around the Kaaba, which was, from even pre-Islamic times, was a place of uh, a sacred enclosure where all people had to put down their arms. And this, of course, facilitated trading uh, because it meant that you couldn't carry on your feuds when you were doing your buying and selling. Eventually, a large tribe settled in the city of Mecca. They realized they could get people to travel there often if they had a place to keep the idols. So, they built this huge box, I guess you'd call it, called the Kaaba. The tribes were invited to keep their idols in the box. That way they always knew where they were and would be encouraged to return to Mecca. Around the year 600 AD, a merchant from Mecca named Muhammad would change all that. Muhammad was, by all accounts, nobody special. He had a fairly wealthy wife, but was basically unknown. He couldn't even read or write. At about age 40 he had a vision in a dream, where he claims he received a message from the angel Gabriel explaining there is only one God. In a cave above Mecca, Muhammad had an experience that would be the defining moment of his life. An angel was said to appear before him in the form of a man. Instruct Muhammad tells the angel he must have the wrong guy. Muhammad didn't know how to read. Gabriel says to him, don't you think, if God can create the world, he can deal with you not reading? Remember that next time you try to argue with an angel, it probably isn't a good idea. At first, nobody bothered to write any of the ideas down. Muhammad just told it to the people. Eventually, they realized it might be smart to keep a record of it, so they started writing them down. These teachings were gathered together into a book called the Quran. It was not completed until well after Muhammad's death. Muslims believe that everything in the Quran came from God, not from Muhammad's own ideas. The Quran then, is the word of Allah, which is the Arabic word for God. There was a second book that was also important called the Sunnah. Muhammad's following began to grow. They called themselves Muslims, for those who surrender to God. They set out to preserve the message Muhammad had brought. This was the beginning of the Quran. The Quran was revealed orally, but very soon people realized that it had to be written down in order to make sure that it wasn't corrupted and that the original message was maintained. 
And from a very early date, and it's, it's very unclear when that date was, because no early manuscripts of the Quran survive, people began copying it down. The Quran is a revelation of spiritual teaching, of both ethical and social guidance. It was revealed and remains in Arabic. With words alone, the Quran delivers its vision to the faithful. Its imagery conjures a picture of the afterlife that resonates with all the power of traditional Bedouin poetry. Yet for all the imagery of paradise in the Quran, there was no easy description of God. In the Sunnah are found the five pillars of Islam. They are called pillars because they are the foundation of Islam. The five pillars are not found in the Quran, but instead in the Sunnah which are the words of Muhammad. That doesn't change the fact that as a Muslim you are expected to follow them. Hey, is this dancing five freaking anyone else out? Here are the five pillars. One is prayer. Muslims must pray five times a day. Wherever they are they stop, face Mecca, and recite a prayer. Another pillar is fasting during the month of Ramadan. That means they can't eat or drink anything while the sun is up. Next is charity. Muslims are expected to give 2.5% of their income to charity. Fourth, the declaration. Each day Muslims must recite a declaration of beliefs, kind of like the Pledge of Allegiance. Finally, there is the pilgrimage called the Hajj. That is a trip to Mecca that all Muslims should try to take at least once in their lives. Let's do this review Dora style. You fill in the blanks as I say them. Seriously, do it. It will be fun. Okay, Islam is a... It is a religion, you said country didn't you? Try to pay more attention. It is a religion, based on two books, the blank and the sunnah. Write, the Quran, good. It was preached by... Yep, you got it, Muhammad. And it has five pillars which include... Okay, I'll just assume you got those, since we just talked about it.